a new space race is coming. This time, the theater of battle is set on Mars. The race for Mars will be a fiercely competitive environment between various national space agencies involving crewed missions to Mars, Mars landings, or setting a crewed base there. However, before setting foot on the Red Planet, humans need to establish a base on our nearest neighbor first. The Russian, Chinese, and American space agencies tout the plans to conquer the moon. Private companies like SpaceX are no less competitive. Therefore, there are many reasons to conclude that building cities on the moon should take precedence over Mars. Homer Hickam, a famed NASA engineer, made the same point. Let's find out everyone's perspective on the matter in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Homer Hickam is perhaps best known as the inspiration for October Sky, a 1999 movie about growing up in West Virginia and building a rocket against the odds. He was first inspired when, as a child, he watched Sputnik flying in the sky in 1957. Following the release of his latest memoir, Don't Blow Yourself Up, Hickam says that he now hopes a future moon city could inspire people in the same way. I'm 78 years old, and I hope to live long enough to see the lights in a little crater on the moon from a little community," Hickam tells Inverse. His comments come as private companies and national space agencies ramp up efforts to reach further into space. SpaceX is building its Starship rocket in Texas with plans for an orbital test as soon as possible and a crewed mission to Mars this decade. Blue Origin last month announced plans for a commercial space station, and founder Jeff Bezos has expressed support for giant cities orbiting Earth. Hickam suggests that efforts like these could help inspire a new generation. As a child, Hickam looked up and saw Sputnik in the sky from his Coalwood hometown, a community more focused on coal mining than space colonization. He says that in the future, children could similarly look up and see the lights from cities on the moon. We'll have Coalwood on the moon, he says. I can't wait to see that. And in a twist that would perhaps make this city a lot more like Colwood, Hickam says that these cities could support mining activities on the moon. The moon is loaded with resources that the Earth needs. There is a business plan that could be made for the moon, declared Hickam. He also supports SpaceX and Elon Musk's efforts to get to Mars, but cites two reasons why the moon should take priority. First off, Mars is so far away. Humanity would need to develop nuclear rockets to cut journey times from up to 9 months down to just 3 months. Secondly, there is enough to do on the moon that we would be preoccupied with for decades. But beyond economic activities in space, Hickam also suggests that humans may have the ability to go to space because our creator wants us to get out there and really admire what he or she has done. And it may very well be that we are the only intelligent species capable of doing that. But what about space agencies and private companies? What do they think about this issue? The Russian, Chinese, and American space agencies advertise the scientific benefits of working on a moon base. NASA claims its base plans will allow our robot and astronauts to explore more and conduct more science than ever before. For SpaceX, a mission to the moon would provide an opportunity to gain valuable experience for missions to Mars and beyond. Science exploration and clean energy are good goals, but money could be the catalyst to get private enterprises really interested. A Goldman Sachs report in 2017 claimed that a single asteroid could be worth up to 50 billion US dollars in rare resources. Meanwhile, the moon holds hundreds of billions of dollars of untapped resources. The value of space mining has got private companies excited now more than ever. And the next gold rush is on the moon. In other words, as a sentiment shared by SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, we should take advantage of the window of opportunity that is opening. So who's going to build it? Several organizations plan to build permanent lunar settlements. Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos said in 2018 that he planned to work with NASA and the European Space Agency to build a permanent settlement on the moon. 
NASA has plans of its own to build infrastructure on the moon with the planned Artemis base camp that would support future crewed missions. The plan is to send humans to the moon in 2024 before sending more crew to the moon around once per year. The base camp would support missions in the long term, with housing for up to four astronauts for a month-long stay. Russia and China have also planned a permanent moon base. In June, the two countries announced plans for a permanent base on the moon to support scientific work. In September 2019, the Open Lunar Foundation also announced its goal to build a settlement on the moon at a cost of $5 billion. The nonprofit organization is backed by names like Steve Jurvetson, who also serves on the board of SpaceX and Tesla. SpaceX itself has also expressed interest in using its underdeveloped Starship rocket to build a settlement on the moon. We should have a base on the moon, like a permanently occupied human base on the moon, and then send people to Mars, Musk said in March of 2019. Hickam hopes that these small stations would encourage companies to expand their operations over time. That's what I hope to see, he says. We go back to the moon, we set up a station there, commercial companies go up there, they just start mining. Now when could this happen? NASA aims to send humans back to the moon in 2024. This would act as a stepping stone to a larger habitat sometime later. Musk claimed in April of 2021 that SpaceX could do it sooner. Previous concept art from NASA claimed it could build an advanced exploration lander by 2026. SpaceX's timescale for a moon base is less clear, while Musk has grand plans to build a city on Mars by 2050, as well as expressing interest in building a base on the moon, he's more quieter on when this moon base could take shape. On the Russian-Chinese side, The Guardian explains that the two countries plan to choose two or more sites in the coming years. This would start a decade-long construction process, leading to a base by 2036 at the earliest. As for when these could expand out into something closer to a city, that remains to be seen. Phil Metzger, a planetary physicist at the University of Central Florida, told The Verge in 2019 that it can take up to 20 years to establish a mine on Earth. That could mean it would take far longer to establish industry on the unfamiliar terrain of the moon. I'm pretty excited about a moon base. What about you guys? How do you feel about moon bases? Let me know in the comments down below. And that's pretty much all the information I have for you today. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. We'll be so glad to receive all of your contributed comments. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. And as always, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you won't miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX where we go over a bunch of details about space and SpaceX related topics. This is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.